European nations boosted their defenses in response to the annexation of the Crimea Peninsula in 2014 and Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine in 2022, a London-based think tank said Friday, but much remains to be done for them to be ready to face threats from Russia. That's the conclusion of a report released by the International Institute for Strategic Studies. NATO has not just significantly increased its ambitions regarding its deterrence and war-fighting posture, but European members have sought to address critical capability and readiness shortfalls, the report said. Unsurprisingly, however, after decades of neglect and underinvestment, much remains to be done and progress has been mixed. It was released as European leaders, including NATO's Secretary-General Mark Rutt, was reassessing their transatlantic relations in Budapest, Hungary in the hope that Donald Trump's second U.S. presidency will of the strife of his first administration and maintain a strong common stance on Russia. During his election campaign, Trump threatened actions that could have groundbreaking consequences for nations across Europe, from a trade war with the EU to a withdrawal of NATO commitments and a fundamental shift of support for Ukraine in its war with Russia. During his first 2017 to 2021 term, Trump pushed NATO's European members to spend more on defense, up to and beyond 2% of gross domestic product, and to be less reliant on U.S. military cover. In that respect, some progress has been made, with 2024 defense spending by NATO's European member states 50% higher than it was 10 years ago, the report said. But problems remain. The IISS said, naming a lack of stability in public financing that ultimately limits the defense industry's ability to invest with confidence. Moreover, regularity hurdles and application of environmental, social and governance standards will continue to act as barriers to investment, it said. Europe's defense industry managed to increase output of some products after 2022, especially those with high demand from Ukraine, such as air defense and artillery. But European countries also donated their own weapons to Ukraine, including F-16 fighter jets, and remain dependent on the US for some important aspects of their military capability, looking also to Brazil, Israel and South Korea to meet their needs due to a lack of their production capacity. It also warned that many European armies don't have enough military personnel. A lesson learned from Russia's war against Ukraine is that countries need significant troops to engage with and defeat enemy attack but also enough forces to regenerate after combat attrition. By that standard, key European armed forces remain under strength. Shivalak, one of the most active volcanoes in Russia's Kamchatka Peninsula, erupted on Thursday evening spewing clouds of ash as high as 15 kilometers into the sky and covering broad areas with dust. The ash cloud extended over 250 kilometers to the east and engulfed several villages in gray volcanic dust, officials said. The Institute of Volcanology and Seismology of the Far Eastern Branch of the Russian Academy of Sciences has declared the highest danger level for aviation, Russian news agencies reported. Local authorities advised residents to stay indoor and temporary closed schools in several affected communities. A road between Klyuchy and USD Kamchatsk was also closed overnight. Shivaluk has two parts, the 3,283-meter-old Shivaluk, and the smaller, highly active young Shivaluk. The Kamchatka Peninsula, which extends into the Pacific Ocean about 6,600 kilometers east of Moscow, is one of the world's most concentrated areas of geothermal activity, with about 30 active volcanoes. Наблюдается визуальное выпадение в поселке Усть-Камчатск вулканического пепла незначительно припорошило снег. Камчатский район подвержен негативному воздействию вдруг Камчатский. 
При этом в целях надлежащего контроля за ситуацией ближе к полудню наблюдается по его последствия в поселке Усть-Камчатск. И на распространение пеплового шлейфа происходит таким образом, что основная его часть уходит в залив, минуя населенные пункты. Все необходимые запасы на территории каждого из населенных пунктов района имеются. Ситуацию мы на постоянном контроле держим.